The date is November 14, 1940. Coventry sleeps under a moonless sky. At 7.20 p.m., the first Heinkel 111 crosses the English coast, its Nicobine radio beam guiding it straight toward the city center. Over the next 11 hours, 449 Luftwaffe bombers will drop 500 tons of explosives and 30,000 incendiaries. By dawn, the medieval cathedral is a skeleton of stone. 568 civilians lie dead, and two-thirds of the city's buildings are rubble or flame. RAF Fighter Command manages exactly zero confirmed interceptions that night. Zero. But what if I told you this night of horror wasn't a fluke? What if it was just the beginning of a nightmare that gripped Britain for months, where the skies turned deadly after dark, and heroes of the day became ghosts in the night? Imagine the terror. Sirens wailing, families huddling in shelters, while unseen bombers rained fire from above. No one to stop them. No hope in sight. This is the story of how Britain clawed back from the brink. Not with brute force, but with ingenuity, grit, and a technology that started as a cursed failure. Buckle up. By the end, you'll see how a useless gadget became the weapon that won the night. But first, let's dive into the darkness. This wasn't an exception. This was the pattern. Between September 1940 and May 1941, the Blitz claimed over 43,000 British civilian lives and wounded 139,000 more. Night after night, German bombers crossed the channel like vengeful shadows, striking their targets with chilling precision before vanishing back home. Meanwhile, the RAF's Spitfires and Hurricanes, those gleaming saviors of the daytime Battle of Britain, sat grounded, impotent under the stars. Built for sunlit dogfights where a pilot's sharp eyes ruled the sky, they were blind in the void. At 15,000 feet on a pitch-black night, a bomber could slip past just 200 yards away, invisible as a whisper. The RAF threw everything at the problem. They stationed single-engine fighters in patrol boxes along predictable routes, gambling on a lucky glimpse. Success? Less than 1%. Then came the cat's eye patrols. Elite pilots with alleged superhuman night vision lurking near searchlight batteries, waiting for ground crews to paint a target in the sky. On rare, moonlit nights with clear skies, a ace might catch a silhouette against the clouds. Might. Flight Lieutenant Guy Gibson, future leader of the legendary Dambusters raid, logged 99 night sorties in early 1941 and claimed just one kill. The odds were stacked like a house of cards ready to collapse. Picture the math. A Heinkel bomber spans about 57 feet. At night, most pilots couldn't spot it beyond 400 feet. To scour a cubic mile of airspace at 250 meter premons, you'd need to comb through 147 billion cubic feet. While the bomber occupied a mere 50,000, it was like sprinting blindfolded through a haystack the size of Westminster Abbey hunting one specific needle. Heart-pounding, isn't it? The tension of knowing death flies nearby, unseen, while you grasp at shadows. Ground controllers tried to turn the tide. Using chain-home radar stations, they tracked raids and radioed vectors to fighters. Bandit at Angels 15, heading to 70. Pilots raced into position, but radar updates lagged every few minutes with accuracy off by up to two miles. By arrival, the bomber had shifted. Corrections flew in. The fighter twisted. The bomber evaded. It was a lethal game of blind man's bluff, until fuel ran dry or bombs fell unchecked. Air Chief Marshal Hugh Dowding watched his nation burn from the command room. Cities like Birmingham, Liverpool, Manchester, and Glasgow crumbled under systematic assault. War factories stalled, Morale fractured, the Luftwaffe lost more bombers to training mishaps than to RAF night fighters. Something had to break. Britain needed eyes in the dark. They needed airborne radar. And they needed it now, or risk losing everything. Chain Home was a marvel. 350-foot towers spotting bombers 120 miles out. 
buying time for daytime scrambles. It saved Britain in the sunlit battles. But detecting versus destroying, worlds apart. Here's the gritty reality of ground-controlled interception. A station picks up a raid. Hostile formation. 40-plus aircraft. Angels 12, vector 285, speed 180 knots. Controllers vector a fighter. Steer 3D10. Climb to Angels 14. Antwis 14. Minutes tick by. The raid shifts, climbs, new vectors. More delays. Bombers splinter into groups. Chain homes precision. Two miles horizontal, 1,000 feet vertical. A 13 million cubic foot uncertainty bubble swarming with elusive targets. Controllers picked a blip, guided blindly. You're close now. The pilot stares into abyss, nothing. Within miles, perhaps, but night swallows all. Legends emerged, like squadron leader John Cunningham and his controller, flying officer Jimmy Ronsley, who read radar like a seer, intuiting paths to place Cunningham in visual range. Yet pre-mid-1941 success, a meager 5%. For every hit, 19 bombers slipped through, dropping death. Suspense built nightly. Would tonight be the breakthrough or another city in flames? Chain home's flaws compounded the agony. Outward facing, it faltered inland. Blind below 1,000 feet, bombers dipped low post coast, vanishing until target ascent. Ground clutter, hills, buildings, storms, spawned 200 ghost contacts on windy nights. Operators filtered noise amid exhaustion. Errors meant lives lost. Controllers in bunkers built 3D battles from flickering screens, 15,000 feet and 50 miles distant. Pilots wrestled cockpits, scanning endlessly, fuel dwindling. Turn starboard 10 degrees, steady. Target 11 o'clock, three miles, slightly above. Still invisible. Necks ached, eyes burned. Somewhere, a Heinkel crew aligned bomb sites on factories below. The clock ticked mercilessly. Britain craved radar in the sky, painting threats ahead. Small, potent, airborne. Impossible in 1939? Enter Edward Bowen, a 27-year-old physicist at Bawdsey Manor, cradle of Britain's radar. In 1936, Robert Watson Watt proved radar's aircraft detection. By 1939, Bowen's mission, shrink a house-sized station into flight-ready gear. The prototype airborne interception, AI radar, was ludicrous. 220-pound transmitter, 180-pound receiver, total 600 pounds, twice a Spitfire's armament weight. Skeptics scoffed. The display? A five-inch cathode ray tube glowing eerie green showing left, right, and up, down traces. Blips centered? Target ahead. Max range, three miles. 90 seconds closing. Min, 400 feet. A vanishing act just before firing. Pilots dreaded this blind zone, diving at invisible foes, praying no collision. First test in a Bristol Blenheim, August 1939, pre-Poland invasion. It barely worked. Temperamental. Hard to read mid-flight, scorching internals. Rayef Brass balked. Remove this fantasy. AI demanded two-man crews, pilot, and operator. Single-seaters out. Enter sluggish twins like Blenheim's or new bow fighters. Veterans ditched nimble hurricanes for radar-stuffed slugs. December 1940 debut with number 25 squadron. Disaster. First sortie. Radar fire. Second, malfunction. Third, uninterpretable. Fourth, detection, but escape. 47 sorties, zero kills. Worse, RF exposure sickened crews. Glow ruined night vision. Complexity grounded sets. Serviceability? Half at best. Bowen pushed on, but complaints mounted. Flight Lieutenant Charles Widow's February 1941 report adds 600 pounds, cuts speed 15 nimiterev, Fails four part seven sorties. Never closed visually. Recommendation. Ditch for fuel tanks. 
endorsed. Ranges fluctuated. Humid nights absorbed signals. Tail aspects halved detection. Min range blank terrified. Hurtling at 400 meter mead combined speed toward ghosts. Heat baked cockpits to 110 degree at 20 degree favor altitude. Reliability? 38% in March 1941. Tubes fried, antennas weathered, power inconsistent. Training? 20 hours for operators new to scopes. Steep curve, deadly stakes. Pilots loathed lost agility. Bue fighters became ducks. By April 1941, useless seemed etched in stone. Squadrons begged removal. Some improvised sans radar. But then a turning point. John Cunningham downed his first on November 19, 1940. By May 1941, 15 kills. Press probed, secret? Air Ministry's genius lie, carrots. Cat's eyes. Cunningham's vitamin A diet supercharged vision. Campaigns urged blackout carrot eating. Fabrication? Mostly. Vitamin A aids vision, but no superpowers. Truth? AI radar and operator Ronsley. Deception shielded tech. Boosted health. Misled Germans. By mid-1941, AI worked sporadically. Not hardware evolution. Experience. Operators flew hundreds of sorties. Mastering signals. Geometry. Ronsley's commentary. Contact two miles left. Port five degrees. Closing 1.5 miles. Cunningham spotted exhausts. Silhouettes. Others followed. Constable Maxwell triple kill May 10th. Embry 4 in April. Number 604 wrecked 11 in May. Kills climbed, proving viability. Germans clueless. Blamed lights. Training carrots. Captured docks dismissed tech. Suspense peaked. Would secrets hold? February 1940, Birmingham. Randall and Boots' cavity magnetron leaped tech. 10 cm wavelength versus 1.5 meters. Sharper, lighter, efficient. Ranges to 6 miles, men under 300 feet. But Britain bombed. Couldn't scale. Tizard mission. September 1940. Magnetron to America. MIT engineered. Factories churned by October 1941. Back to Britain, early 1942. A.I. Makedrud 7th, May 1942. Centimetric intuitive PPI display. Map-like blips. Makodiwi 8th, 1943. Eight-mile range, 450 pounds. Mosquito fighter, 370 meters. Agile, radar, nose integrated. Side-by-side -side crew. U.S. SCR 720, 10 miles, beacons. Training, 200 hours, simulators. Maintenance, 80% serviceable. By 1943, lethal. Numbers, 1941, 1944, 600 plus confirmed kills. Number, 85, 108. No, 29, 104 intruders. Number, 604, 98. 1941, 85 kills. 1942, 175. 1943, 230. Early 1944, 110. Baby Blitz, Yan May, 1944. Luftwaffe raids met massacre. Feb 20 to 21, 25, 127 destroyed. 20% loss. Tactics. Ground to 10 miles, AI takes over. Multi kills routine. German morale shattered. Bombers exploded sans warning. Refusals mounted. By May, Luftwaffe conceded nights. Strategic win. Britain produced uninterrupted. D-Day buildup unscathed. AI birthed modern doctrine. Radar primary. Visuals confirm. Two-man crews standard. Magnetron spawned microwaves. Naval radar. Dark side. Stealth. EW arms race endures. In RAF HQ 1944, Air Chief Marshal Roderick Hill watched boards. Luftwaffe broken. 600 kills saved countless, from useless to victor, through perseverance. Dawn, May 9, 1945. Britain stood. Night fighters held.